Hello everyone. There was a poor man in a village whose only possession was an old donkey. He used the donkey for his own travel and carrying goods for others. It was the only means of his livelihood and it was the most popular animal in the village. But one day the donkey went missing. He looked everywhere but it was nowhere to be found. The news spread through the village very quickly and many people were upset about his loss. Some went to his house to comfort him and help him find the donkey if possible. But when they came to his house they found him happy and peaceful. He seemed not to be affected by the loss. They found it very strange and asked him, "Hey, are you too sad about the loss of your donkey?" The man laughed and said, "Oh no. Why should I be upset and sad? In fact, I'm happier than before because fortunately I was not riding on the donkey. Otherwise, I could have been lost as well." Friends, when we give in to the desires of the flesh, and the things of this world then we lose our real self our real identity the real child of god within us and we are lost in the darkness of sin and when we are in the darkness of sin we cannot discern or see those things which are spiritual or the things of god all of us have weaknesses and can fall into sin even if we don't want to therefore The only way to overcome temptations or avoid the path of the world that leads us into temptation is to look at Jesus Christ. In today's gospel Luke narrates a series of three temptations of Jesus by Satan just prior to his public ministry and concludes when the devil had finished every temptation he departed from him for a time. It means that these are not the only temptations in Jesus life Jesus was tempted throughout his life to turn away from God's plan for his mission however the fact that these three temptations have been recorded in three gospels suggests that they are very significant for five reasons not only to the writers but also to our lord Jesus and to us one The temptation narrative answers two universal questions. A. If Jesus taught his disciples to pray, lead us not into temptation, why then did the Spirit lead our Lord into temptation as Luke and Matthew indicate? B. If God cannot be tempted as James tells us in his letter, then how could Jesus, whom we believe is fully God, be tempted? friends the hebrew word nasau means tempt or test so in the bible it is used in very two different senses on the one hand temptation is an attempt by satan to cause a person to do something which is contrary to god's commands which is called a sin on the other hand temptation is a test by god to a person to prove his faithfulness and obedience to god For example in the case of Job in the Old Testament Satan sought to bring Job to the point of forsaking his faith to the point of sinning but God tested Job to prove his loyalty to him So also from the point of Satan Jesus as the son of God was tempted to disobey his father's plan of establishing the kingdom of God From the viewpoint of God this was a test for Jesus Christ to prove that he was qualified to fulfill his mission as the son of god 2 jesus entire mission was dependent upon his victory over every temptation of satan if jesus had given into temptations he could not have been the antithesis of adam he could not have gained the victory that adam failed to gain 3 satan's temptation of our lord is different from our own temptation These temptations were directly from Satan. 4. Through the temptation of our Lord by Satan, we learn a great deal about the devil. We come to know the mindset and the methods of our enemy. 5. 
Jesus used the word of God as a weapon against Satan. He used the scriptures to expose the error of Satan's solicitations and chart the course of obedience to the will of the Father. Friends, what were the three temptations of Jesus? 1. The first temptation of Jesus was to gratify his own needs. Satan said to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Friends, none of us is capable of changing a stone into a loaf of bread or into anything else. But because Jesus had that supernatural ability, Satan wanted him to use his supernatural powers for his own physical needs. But in response, Jesus quoted from the book of Deuteronomy, One does not leave on bread alone. Friends, Jesus did not deny his hunger. He must have been on the verge of starvation after 40 days of fasting. And he, as the Son of God, had the power to turn stones into bread. But he refused to use his power for his own personal gains or entertain any doubt about God's care and provision. Friends, none of us will be tempted to go through what Jesus did. But we are all tempted to use our resources, powers, status and wealth selfishly. We are tempted to buy and consume far more than we need. As we live in a materialistic society, many of us easily yield to such temptations. Friends, Jesus' response is a reminder for us that material things will not satisfy us. Our life's meaning and satisfaction is not based on what we eat, what we wear, where we live or what we own, but in our trust in God's care and provision. 2. The second temptation of Jesus was to compromise. The devil led Jesus up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to Jesus, I will give you all their authority and splendor. For it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If so, if you worship me, it will all be yours. Friends, this temptation was far more tempting. It was a powerful call for compromise to reach his goal. But Jesus countered the temptation by quoting from the book of Exodus, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Apparently, Satan would have been satisfied if Jesus had bowed down to him. But Jesus refused to compromise his faithfulness to God the Father, even at the cost of his own comfort and life. Friends, we too are constantly tempted to compromise our Christian values, give up our faith and convictions, to gain power and wealth, and use them to manipulate and exploit others for our own advantage and interests. But Jesus' example is an encouragement for us not to make compromises on the truth, biblical moral principles and beliefs for the sake of achieving peace. We cannot be Christians if we compromise our faith by promoting one evil over another. 3. The third temptation of Jesus was to challenge God. Satan took Jesus to the top of the temple and said to him that if he would throw himself down, God would send his angels to protect him. And this time Satan quoted the scriptures too, but his intent was to use it to deceive Jesus. Yes, Jesus was tempted to set up God. But Jesus faced the temptation by recalling a verse from the book of Deuteronomy which says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Yes, Jesus refused to put God to the test to determine if he would save him when he jumped. In other words, Jesus refused to challenge the power of God. Friends, many a time we challenge God to prove that he is real to us. We challenge God to provide proof or evidence that he exists. We raise the question often, how can a good God exist and allow the evil around us? Friends, Jesus' response is a reminder to us that all that we should all we should not challenge God for signs or put him to the test and see if he can be trusted, but rather let us truly and confidently seek him. 
friends let us remember the following just like jesus we too are constantly tempted by satan and tested by god at the same instant but unlike jesus temptations our temptations are or more indirect and they are coming most often from the world and the flesh the devil uses the same three ways to destroy us and god has made available to us the same means the scripture which our lord jesus used against satan let us therefore use the word of god as our weapon to ward off the evil devil and find the true peace at the feet of the prince of peace our lord jesus christ amen god bless you